Right, good day, Junior Tuckies, and welcome to this video dealing with Teredo fights. We're going to be looking at Teredo fights as one of the classifications in the plant kingdom that you need to study as part of your grade 11 syllabus this year. Uh, my name is Mr. P. I'm going to be taking you through this video. Uh, hopefully get a better understanding of uh, Teredo fights, particularly the example we're going to be using today, which is going to be the fern, um, and helping you do better ultimately at the end of your grade 11 year when you do your final exams. So when we start looking at Teredo fights, we're going to start with the fact that we have spores that are produced by this plant. Now these spores are released by the plant in pretty dry conditions. So that's an important point to remember. They're released when conditions are dry. In other words, these are going to be unique conditions. So we wouldn't expect these spores to be released at all times of the year, but particularly when the environmental conditions are favorable. Okay, so now what we have is these spores will land on a bit of ground, um, uh, a place where we now have favorable conditions for this spore to germinate, and it'll germinate in moist conditions to form a prothallus. Now I'm just going to change my spelling here quickly because I see that I've omitted a, a little L in my prothallus. So I'm just going to make sure that my spelling here is correct. All right, so we have a prothallus that forms and this is a part of the gametophyte plant. Okay, so that's an important point to remember as well. So we have the gametophyte plant originate or grow from the prothallus, which is what we see here. And this prothallus uh, is going to be made up of both male and female structures and we'll see unique parts of this as well like the notch there and that becomes a little bit more important for us in a little bit but here we can see that we have a male structure to the one side of the plant or the one side of the prothallus of the gametophyte plant and on the other side we've got the female structures. Now obviously if we've got a male and female structures we're going to have male and female gametes that are produced as well. Now, the male gamete would need to make its way to the female gamete in order for fertilization to take place. So you can think for yourself here that if this spore has germinated in moist conditions to result in this prothallus, this, those moist conditions are also going to be super important when it comes to fertilization taking place, particularly in a plant like this. So looking at the, the male and female structures, we refer to each one by a unique name as well. Our male structure of the prothallus we refer to as the antheridia, and the female, the archegonia. And this is where we're going to find the sperm and the ova. Now for fertilization to take place, as I said, the sperm has to make its way to the ova for those two nuclei to fuse. And water is so important for this to happen or for this to take place because the sperm has to swim swim to the ova for this fertilization to take place and this is why this plant particularly is heavily reliant on water for fertilization. Once fertilization has taken place we see that there is a new plant, the sporophyte plant, that starts to grow out of the gametophyte plant and here we can see that taking place. We can see that there are root-like structures or root structures growing out of the notch end of the prothallus. And also we can see the little fiddlehead fronds starting to grow towards the top. Now during this whole process, the prothallus is actually disintegrated to provide resources to the new sporophyte plant that starts to grow after fertilization has taken place. Eventually, the prothallus will disintegrate completely and we will be left with the sporophyte plant. You can see here that we have the, the fiddlehead frond growing out the top in this image. And if we had to, to sort of zoom in a little bit more, our rhizome over there with our roots and then these fiddlehead fronds would start to grow nice and tall. We see that we've still got a few of those little fiddleheads that grow, but each one of these little fronds or these pinnae on the frond, it's held together by the ratchets. You can see I've tried to label it over there for us. We have that sporophyte plant. Now, if we zoom into one of these little pinnae leaves uh, as part of the frond, we can see at the, the, the bottom side, underside of these little uh, frond leaves, we can find or we will find um, what we call sori. Now these little sori 
are pockets that produce spores through a process called meiosis, which, is, should, which should not be foreign to you, um, where we now have the production of my haploid spores. So that is the formation of spores in the plant. These haploid spores will then, as we started from a spore, be released into the environment in favorable conditions, particularly dry conditions, again to produce the next gametophyte plant. If we divide up this little flow diagram into two specific parts or two unique parts, we find that the one is our gametophyte generation of this plant in its reproductive cycle, and the other is the sporophyte generation, which is the one to the left. Right, I hope that this video has made sense. It's also given you a little bit more insight into the reproduction of particularly the pteridophyte plant. Um, Tune in for further videos on some of the other plant classifications in the plant kingdom. Um, I really do hope that it's been beneficial and look forward to seeing you again. Make sure that you get your hands on the theory booklet as well as the worksheets and worksheet memorandums uh, to help you prepare for your exams. See you again, Junior Tuckies. Thanks very much.